yeah, it's going to be one of those videos. All right, let's take the tinfoil hat off. Um, anytime we're talking about rumors, leaks, whether it's Breath of the Wild, Zelda related, doesn't really matter. Uh, E3, it's always one of those things where you need to come in with an air of skepticism. You need to come in with that grain of salt mentality. You need to be careful what you believe or what you put faith in. I try to be careful as well. No matter what rumors and leaks I put out there on my channel, internally, whether I display that externally or not, internally, I always kind of just assume everything's fake. That's my, that's my assumption, that everything is fake. Even though someone like Samus Hunter 2, as an example, has a pristine reputation right now and has been right on everything until it's announced, I just presume that, you know what, even the best leakers in the world could have false information. So, sure, I have faith in some things. I think the Switch Pro is real. I think there's a shot Breath of the Wild 2 comes out this year. I think there's a shot they launch together. But thinking there's a shot and then not having an air of massive doubt in my mind that either are possible would be disingenuous. I would be lying to you guys if I didn't say, hey, I don't know that this stuff is happening, and I'm not going to get upset if we don't get Breath of the Wild 2 this year. I'm not going to be upset if Switch Pro never comes out, or if it turns out to be fake. I'm not going to be upset about it. Uh, I would say there's a lot of places that suddenly end up on the shit list for reporting, not just Samus Hunter, but we're talking people like uh, Hello Bloomberg, <laughs> Wall Street Journal, uh, some outlets that, unfortunately, credibility would just be out the door. But we're here to talk about some more possible rumors. Now, uh, we get this stuff. Uh, one is, one comes uh, from a video game over Jesse did. Another is from a video that Andres restarted. Both of them have recently been on podcasts on our channel. I'll link to those podcast episodes down in the description and also link to the originating videos for these. They're like 20 minutes to watch both in length, all that jazz. Uh, good stuff. There's some additional details in both uh, that we won't be covering here. We're going to be focusing on what's new in these videos uh, compared to what I have already been covering. And before I get into that, hey, we do have a giveaway going on right now. Head down to the description or the pinned comment to enter. Also, hey, look, E3 is a big deal. We're doing it different here. I'm going to put up a link down in the description as well to our pre-show for E3. We're also going to be doing, if you're here on 4.30, uh, the release date for new Pokemon Snap, we're actually going to be doing a live stream tonight uh, where we talk about our E3 plans while we probably play some new Pokemon Snap because why the hell not? Now... Let's get into this juicy, juicy stuff. And this first major batch comes from Game Over Jesse, who supposedly has a new source uh, contacting him. Uh, the source is apparently someone who worked on the localization team of the first Breath of the Wild, uh, and his name was actually in the email. Uh, it didn't look like it was like an intentional, ooh, woe is me, look at me, this is who I am. It was more like a, hey, look, this guy's name is just attached to every email he sends, you know, like a signature kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, the reason that the name being attached to this matters is because this person apparently is in the credits of Breath of the Wild on the localization team. So again, don't know that this person is who they claim to be, but the name lines up with the actual credits in Breath of the Wild. So at least is worth perking your ears to, especially if there's anything pertinent. Uh, he does go into depth on Nintendo's localization process. However, Game Over Jesse decided not to really go into most of it. Uh, it's a lot of technical details. And with how exact some of this stuff is, it could give away uh, who this person is uh, you know, based on what they know and where they work in Nintendo. Uh, however, he does note that according to this source, the main localization of this game is, in fact, done. So Breath of the Wild 2, they're done localizing the game. You know what that means. When localization's done, the game is definitely in its final stages. If this is true, Breath of the Wild 2 is done, essentially. There's obviously some QA testing, other things that have to go into it, other um, improvements and stuff that come into it to make the game run better, all that jazz look better. But when localization is done, that's like a, a, a giant stamp of approval that this game is in its final stages. But again, this is what his person's saying. Not sure if it's true. Tim Foyle had it, people. All right. So, uh, getting more in-depth on this, uh, it says they do still have a very tiny team 
uh, that's being made available to Breath of the Wild 2 as the game's in QA testing. Some things might come up, and they might have to make a couple minor text changes. So that's kind of something that there still is technically a small team dedicated to the game, just in case something comes up. Uh, so they don't, they're not, they're not preoccupied with other projects. But the main team that was localizing Breath of the Wild 2 has completed their work and has now moved on to other projects. Uh, it does say that uh, he doesn't believe, this this source who works at Nintendo, doesn't believe that Grezzo has four Zelda games in the works. This was an old uh, t- rumor uh, tossed out there that no one really thought they were working on four Zelda games. Uh, but he's saying that that's probably not happening. However, this person did note, and this is kind of unrelated to Breath of the Wild 2, but related to Zelda, that he has seen logos circulating internally for Ocarina of Time and Ocarina of Time HD, and it's extremely secretive, it's extremely hush-hush, and any times it comes up, they're told to keep their mouth shut. So, this is something Nintendo's trying to keep under wraps. I don't know if this is a surprise game coming this year, or if it's a 2022 thing. We talked about in the past how Grezzo or other people might be working on this game. I don't know. Obviously, Majora's Mask might be part of this as well. So that's kind of a, hey, look, it sounds like this thing is actually happening behind closed doors, at least according to this person. Uh, there are, let me see, there's no references to Ocarina of Time 3D, so there's no logo that includes Ocarina of Time 3D that he's seen. It's just been Ocarina of Time and Ocarina of Time HD. There hasn't been any sort of 3D in there, so it being an HD version of the Nintendo uh, 3DS version might be going out the door. Also, we can't dismiss, it could just be Ocarina of Time N64 HD like Super Mario 64. So, we gotta keep in mind, it might not be a remake. It literally could just be what they did to Mario 64. So, let's Not get too hyped, but still, they're doing something, apparently, with Ocarina of Time. All right. Uh, I do note that any other leaker that is giving a title for the game, it's likely fake, uh, or they're just someone who's given intentional and accurate information. Uh, They said with how localization works with this game in particular, there are some titles you could infer from certain things floating out there, but nothing definitive, nothing enough to put out there, this is what the game's going to be called. It's more so we can make a guess at it, but we don't know. He also said the way that Nintendo handles localization with Zelda games in particular is a little bit different than other games in that only small sections of the game are given to each person to localize, so they never get the complete picture of the story, so story details end up not really leaking out because they can make presumptions based on what they localize, but they don't actually have the complete picture, and without the complete picture, what they have, what they localized, doesn't really give a full you know, a full picture of everything going on. So he said there isn't a single leaker or single person at Nintendo of America that actually knows the story. However, uh, he does say, obviously, you know, that has to come from Japan where the story was originally written. However, there is some interesting thing uh, with QA testers for this game. Uh, so they do have QA testers for the English North American version of the game here in the United States. Uh, and they naturally are going to know some story details because they're playing final builds of the game. They're QA testing the game. They're playing final builds of the game. We're going to run into story elements. Uh, and so he said, the interesting thing is Nintendo has a lot of safeguards in place uh, with these QA testers. So basically, QA testers are often like the bottom ring, the shit end of the stick of employees, but Nintendo doesn't treat them that way. Nintendo realizes these people know like actual secrets about unreleased games, and so they're majorly locked down, uh, not allowed to talk to other QA testers. They're not allowed to obviously disclose anything to anybody else. Uh, even you know, e- even amongst like how this, how, how the QA testing works, which I assume they're maybe they're having different QA testers play different sections of the game rather than one play from start to finish. Maybe the one that does play start to finish will be someone like Bill Trennan, who you're not going to ever get anything leaked out of his mouth. Uh, but I'm just saying, like you know, they're playing different sections of the game. So what happens is if information gets out about a certain section of the game. It's very easy for Nintendo to, you know, clamp down on whoever the hell is responsible for that. And that's why details for the story, details on the title, haven't really come out for this game. Because if they did, Nintendo could easily clamp down and fire those people. Uh, And so Nintendo's got a lot of safeguards in place. They're really protective of Breath of the Wild 2. Not surprising. It's a big deal game for Nintendo. Could be another 20 plus million seller. We'll see. So that's basically the end of the details from Game Over Jesse's source. Kind of interesting. Obviously, the big takeaway is, hey, localization's done, at least according to this person. Uh, Then we get into Andre's restart. Love the man. I can't wait to have him on a future podcast. He's actually going to be at our E3 coverage. He's going to be coming in to have conversations on the live show. It's going to be great. HMK is going to be uh, partaking in a conversation after the fact, so we'll have like a mini podcast with him as well. We got a lot of stuff lining up here. Um, 
let's get into the information Andre's Restart has because Andre's Restart had a private conversation with Samus Hunter 2. I have a private conversation with them as well. I just didn't ask these specific questions. So kudos to Andre's Restart for jumping the gun and trying to get more information from someone who seems like a verified leaker, if you can verify a leaker. Um, it says, so first was about the release date for Breath of the Wild 2, uh, and apparently it was indeed... Uh, and technically still is, planned for 2021. However, it might have been delayed to early 2022 because of COVID, which is why Nintendo has been pretty coy on when exactly they are going to show the game. They want to show it when they can be confident of their release window, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, Zelda is traditionally infinitely delayed all the time. So Nintendo wanted to be like, hey, we ain't going to show this until we're ready. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, he does note that this is also true for the Pokemon Remix, obviously shining, uh, di Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, right? Um, they are announced for this year, but there hasn't been a specific date given, and this was intentional. Normally, there would, would have been a date given, but they realized there could be a COVID delay associated with that, so they didn't want to give an exact date in case, for some reason, it's pushed to early 2022. Uh, he does think, uh, based on knowledge of past game releases from Nintendo, that it would be hard to release Breath of the Wild outside of this fiscal year, which ends in March 2022. However, he notes, if some reason Breath of the Wild 2 skips E3, then there's a very high likelihood Breath of the Wild is falling outside of this launch window. Now, Samus Hunter did note to somebody else on uh, on Twitter that, you know, said, oh, you know, Breath of the Wild's not coming for two years. And Samus Hunter said, no, 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 Breath of the Wild's coming before two years. Well, two years would put that at, what, you know, 2023, like spring of 2023. So, yeah, it's probably not going to come that late. I would, I would say holiday 2022 at the latest. But, again, we'll have to wait and see what happens with this game. If localization is done, if the plan is to have it out this year, uh, and if Nintendo's gearing up for a massive reveal at E3 for Zelda's 35th anniversary, and, hey, Samus Hunter did note we're getting some sort of Zelda news in the next month that's either going to tease something for E3 or, or show something Zelda-related. Could be Hyrule Warriors DLC, could be, you know, something like that. We'll see. All I know is I'm ready. I've been ready for Breath of the Wild 2 since the end of the DLC, since we got the Master Cycle, since we beat, you know, the Master... God, what was the name? Down in the comments, who, who was the name? Was the Master Koga? Not Master Koga. Whoever the final person was you, bought, you fought in that DLC. Man, it's been years since I fought that that person. That, you know, that was one of those Sheikas. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime, bringing you this report. Hope to see you tonight for our E3 stream Q&A style. We'll talk about a lot of stuff. We'll play some Snap. We'll have some fun, and we'll pray the Pokemon Company doesn't copyright my channel since the Pokemon Company tends to not like people that play Pokemon games on stream. They copyright the music. They copyright everything. Weird. Weird.